Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Got Heartbroken and Become Crimson Dragon of Domination Part 5. Before we start please go support Dorita DK for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Blessing or Curse. After meeting Yuji and deciding that right now going back to the others won't be a viable option with him out of the picture, it would be better so he can figure out his new abilities. Issei sat in the living room with a large number of movies in front of him. Issei. You have a lot of these don't you? Yuji. Trust me this helps you had the queen with you so it changed your vessel and soul together, but that's not a bad thing. Issei. Mind explaining why the movies. I thought training would be a bit different. Yuji. Fair, you see with cursed energy it's based on emotions. Keeping a level head about everything will help you keep it in a constant state so that it doesn't go haywire. Issei. Like dragon emotions, if I'm too angry then it goes out of control. Yuji. Yes exactly, I suppose you can use this training to keep it to yourself, your cursed energy is based on your negative emotions, you see cursed energy leaks from the human body and accumulates. When it ferments over time, it gives birth to cursed spirits which are the creatures you saw. There are a lot of cursed tools, cursed objects, and cursed corpses that are all infused with cursed energy that can be used for your own gain, but also at risk. Jujutsu sorcerers can manipulate their cursed energy and channel it into various techniques. Issei. So fears more like me. Yuji. Yes we are small in number, but we can do a lot of unexplainable and unthinkable things. Now then take this. He handed Issei a bear with large fists with boxing gloves on. Issei. Cool bear. Bang. It instantly hit him in the face knocking him over. He heard giggling and saw Ember floating behind him with office watching him as well. He then heard Drake laughing in the background as well, he held his face where the bear hit and picked it up. UG. The bear reacts to your cursed energy output too high it will hit you in the face to low, it will hit you in the face, I used this guy to help me when I started, because I had the king of curses I was forced into this life very fast as yourself, Issei. Okay so basically keep it calm. He nodded and walked towards the door, Yuji. I suggest starting with the romance movies first then moving on to action, it will help you keep it low to high easier, Issei. Sure thing. Bang. He held his nose with an irritated expression and kept calm as best he could and picked it up and brought it to the couch with him and started the first movie Titanic. Issei. Buck me. Bang. This continued for a few weeks each time the punches to his face grew from maybe 30 times a day to 15 till it reached once a day where he let his guard down, which was when he realized that it reacts when his guard is lowered and his energy starts to rise or lower, depending on how he is feeling. Once he realized this, he kept it at a constant pace and after three more weeks of just watching movies he could act like normal with a bear with him and it wouldn't react or even move unless he moved it, he could be himself and relax, but it still didn't move he had mastered keeping the bear at bay, which in turn meant his regulation of cursed energy was perfect. Later in the bathroom Issei looked at his hair change color again to jet black. Issei. Ha I like the white hair, but my eyes stayed red, weird. Ember. Wouldn't it be representative of your cursed energy not causing changes? Issei. Yes, but it almost doesn't look like me I mean even a few of my features changed after Great Red completed my dragon transformation. Greg. Indeed perhaps see this as your final form your magic reserves including your cursed energy reserves have been stockpiled to an immense amount, you might give the faction leaders a run for their money and power and strength alone. Issei. Sweet. He left the bathroom and saw the massive scar from his throat to his stomach, he traced it with his finger, and he almost didn't feel any pain from it, it was sensitive, but he could move more freely without being in pain. He met up with Yuji again and found him looking at a picture of a young blonde woman. Issei. I feel like I've seen that face before. Yuji. Yes Jennifer Lawrence, well done now we can move on to the part of figuring out what curse techniques you can use. Issei. Sure, well I think there was one nothing could touch me, I had a few people try and touch me, and it sent a few flying across the room, while some could touch me. Yuji. That is part of the curse technique called infinity, what else? Issei. Well I could see how magic flows in people, and also see them when they are not even in the same spot I always knew where they were without them even saying anything, even when they wanted to hide their tracks with it, as still able to find them, and yet I could see them clearly, I even had to put on sunglasses, always because it was hurting my head to look at others head on. Yuji. I'm sure you know of the six eyes already. Issei nodded in agreement. Issei. How do I know if I can do other things? Yuji. Practice, everyone is different for instance you could stand a chance to be like the queen's first tamer creator, he could copy almost everyone's techniques and use them like he wants. Issei. Does this count as a sign? He held his hand out and a small creature formed in his hands and flew to Yuji. Yuji. 
what a unique ability you can make your own cursed spirits, what about taking them in your arsenal, you might be able to be a Shikigami user, or have the ability to manipulate a cursed creature itself come with me, Issei followed Yuji, and they walked deeper into the land they resided in, and Issei could feel something off almost like a complete evil it was super small, yet he could sense the creature they were walking towards, as they entered a room he saw the creature fully in all its glory it was so disfigured he couldn't make out what he really looking at, Yuji. Go ahead and try and change its form if you can or try and capture it like a Pokemon. Issei confused first off what am I looking at? Yuji. A transfigured human that is beyond saving the cursed energy turned it into this creature, killing the person it once was. Issei. You have the king don't you? Yuji. I don't the king was killed a long time ago when I was your age, but he was with me for so long that I have a good amount of his powers and abilities alongside my own. Issei. Okay, he stepped forward and held his hand out, and he saw the cursed energy move around his hands, watched it go away and spread around his arms, and force his scales to grow well, as he held his hand out it looked like the creature's body started to transform and slowly turn into a bird, then turned into a orb of pure cursed energy, Yuji. Hmm as I thought you could copy other people's cursed techniques to your own will, Issei. And my magic seems to be reacting accordingly to it, Ember. Chuckling with my power too you are super strong now Issei, Issei. Well then, he took out a piece of rope and tied his long hair back, Issei. Let's get to work, Yuji. Good luck, Issei. How what do you mean good luck? Within seconds a large creature burst out through the wall grabbing him and breaking through a few walls. This monster was huge holding him back and Yuji walked behind it and smiled a wrinkled old smile, Yuji. Meat, beast. The creature started growling at him, Yuji. As much as you can use magic to fight right now is your cursed energy training you can only use the cursed energy techniques to fight now you may first use your fists, this is a third grade creature pretty weak for trained sorcerers, but for you who has fighting abilities and needs practice using your cursed energy has the best bet, it grabbed his legs and slammed him into a wall, I say. I'm in for a rough time, break plus ember. Yes. Elsewhere in the underworld, everyone could be seen standing around a grave site with a single tombstone in the Gremory graveyard to hold the closest they had to their blood family they hide us. It was a sad day no one said a thing, and no one could they had no experience with this, before it had been a long time since they had a loss like this, the Haidu family had been such a large part of the family that it felt like a bad dream without any of them in it. Serziches stood forward and spoke to everyone that was around, ranging from the Gremory family the Phoenix family Akeno's father, a few angles Sirerg and his mother, the Yaka Kai clan Yuta, and the rest of them, along with Sona and her peerage, Serziches. Thank you all for coming today, we lost an amazing family, friends and genuinely good people, that is hard to come by in this day, and time to find people that you can trust, and who will be there for you when you need it, they made us feel human even when we are not, we were underprepared for this day because we all foresaw a future where Issei and his family would be here with us for a few thousand years to come, but today we have to say goodbye to a brother, son, father, rival, apprentice, lover, the list goes on, I want to say that this isn't the end of Issei and his family they won't be forgotten, as long as they live on in our hearts then they won't leave our memories. They all gave a small round of applause for him, and they showed the statue made for him they couldn't help but smile, knowing that if he were here, he would be laughing with them. But Issei, he stands with his hands covered in blood panting out of breath, and looking at the creature he had blasted into pieces with a few punches. Yuji walked close to him clapping. Yuji. Well done you saw how to fight with hand to hand. Issei. Tired yay when I tried to hit it, either there wasn't enough force behind my attack, but also it did something weird where I hit him, but the damage came long after my initial hit. Yuji. I was the same it is something that can be used well if you are smart enough for it, I used to add more energy just before the hit impacts the enemy, giving them a harder hit than what I really hit them with, I say. Tired cool. He took a knee. Yuji. Rest we can get you used to more fighting tomorrow with someone who is a Shikigami user, and they can teach you how to summon and fight with them, I say. Tired works for me. Yuji walked away and Issei stayed sitting for a few minutes. Greg. You seem more tired than normal. Issei. I am im using my actual energy in a fight here, im sure the more I do this it'll get better. Greg. Im impressed with this old man he seems to be very knowledgeable. Issei heard footsteps coming closer to him as he looked up he saw the lowly dragon walking closer to him eating a cookie. Issei. You sleep well enough. Office. Hmm this room had some barrier around it, so no sound came through I didn't know you were here till I saw the old man walk from here, I say. Yeah getting used to fighting with this power I have now, office. Hmm your aura seems changed I wouldn't think it's you if I had to meet you after this, I say. For real. Well what does it feel like, office. Anger hate agony, I think that's what the cursed energy gives off your dragon side isn't derigs or great reds, but your own you're a new dragon, so not even current dragons will know this is you with the hair change and full eye change, you really are a different person, I say. Just what I needed an identity crisis. He watched as the bright orange ball of fire left his body and floated around his head, Ember. 
Well not only that you have scary eyes now, and they only scream anger and are tired, they say. How well I feel like that might as well keep to it, this is me now others are going to need to either like this version of me, or they not going to have to deal with me, Dryag. Vali and the white one will be very surprised to see this change in you, they say. He'll kick his ass regardless, but I need to go get done. He went to the hot spring and enjoyed the hot water relaxing his muscles he looked up and saw the barrier around the place, they say. Ha keeps things hidden, and I can change it to my liking might need to learn that. After eating he went to sleep after a few hours he sensed something closer to him that grabbed him his eyes opened, and he saw a jellyfish looking creature wrapping its tendrils around his legs, as he realized what it was doing, he pulled his legs out of its grasp, and flipped out of the bed and started running, as he ran around the temple grounds he saw the beast creature back on its feet walking, around with other creatures flying around, as he made his way to the plaza he saw the barrier forming around him, and sensed another presence behind him, and it wasn't office or Yuji this one was dangerous. He turned around and saw someone that looked like the man that tried to kill him. They say. Oh hell no that's not funny. It's not looks like they brought him back too bad for you him worse than him. They say. Huh. How. The large black and white wolf landed in front and it was growling at him. They say. Shit. The wolf launched at him and he pushed it out of his way and made a run for it. As he ran he saw Yuji standing there with a smile on his face. Yuji. Don't worry about my friend as of right now you can only use Shikigami. They say. Got it, he slid and brought out the bird that he caught, and it carried him back towards the man he had seen before and stood ready, they say. So you're him huh, what's your name? Megumi. Megumi Fushiguro at your service brat. He made a hand movement and a large serpent came slithering toward him and wrapped him up in a chokehold. Issei's bird came back and attacked the eyes of the snake, and Issei used this chance to try and take the snake for himself, but before he could it disappeared into the shadows. Issei looked confused but decided to pull out his sword and slice which sliced the wolf and one of the bird creatures in the sky. They all looked confused. Megumi. Looks like you have dismantle as well as cleaver interesting, but it's dangerous. Issei. What? The shikigami around him disappeared into the shadows, and everything felt like it was calming down. Megumi walked closer and looked at Issei. Megumi. Looks like we would need Yuta, but Hess long dead with the queen trapped away. Issei. Oh didn't Yuji tell you I had the queen a little over a month or two, a man that looks a lot like you used this blade of his, and cut me down and took it from me. Megumi. Well it'll be damned, but you still seem to have her leverage she might come back to you if you get that ring back. Issei. How long have you two been alive? Yuji. A while a lot of our friends have either passed on or died in battle, you're the first cursed user to make their appearance in a few hundred years, they say. Shocked what? Megumi. Reversed curse technique the stronger the user the better, this technique takes negative energy and positive, and in turn can heal the body by turning the negative energy into positive energy, so you can heal yourself and keep yourself alive for long periods of time, but if the body is too far damaged, then you have less of a chance to bring someone back to life, Yuji. Using this technique also keeps the body fresh at all times, so you can fight for long periods of time, they say. I see, Megumi. What I'm really concerned about is how many innate techniques you have shown now, they say. What do you mean, Megumi? Many sorcerers can have more than one, but there are a few that have only one that is only theirs, and no one can copy them, it embeds itself in one's brain, and having too many will overload your brain that could have some severe circumstances, Yuji. Yuta was able to use many many because the Queen Rika was an external aid to assist him with his cursed energy. They say. Would Dragrember help me? Megumi. Maybe but it's still dangerous if you can copy innate techniques it will only stick to three at a time it was the maximum one person should be able to handle. They say. Okay I can work with that, so what now? Megumi. You tried to take my Arachimaru just now didn't you? They say. Yeah I can manipulate the cursed spirits. Megumi. See that's an innate technique so that's one, and you either use dismantle or cleaver just now to cut my divine dogs and new, they say. Yeah I just slashed my sword and that happened, Yuji. With proper training you can just look at people and cut them not needing to slice, so be careful with that one it was the king's innate technique, they say. Okay I'll keep that in mind, Megumi how can I get more shikigami as much as I can fly my bird friend is actually pretty useful, Megumi. I'm familiar with the magic world since ours are so close think of them as familiars find, and if you have curse manipulation and idle transformation, you can turn ordinary techniques into some powerful creatures for you to use, they say. Interesting how do I find more? Yuji. Follow us we can show you. They walked away from the temple and made it to a hospital, as they got closer Issei could feel and see all the cursed spirits either attached to dying people or lingering around feeding off the sadness, anger and dread in the hospital, Megumi. Because of all the death that comes with a place like this, it's a breeding ground for cursed spirits they cause things like headaches, and can even kill a person, if they are weak enough just by feeding off their negative energy, it is very similar to schools, no matter where you go it's always places that a lot of emotions can be happy or sad, they say. 
Ha I never thought about it and always wondered why hospitals felt that way, Megumi. Watch as we make a veil around this place to keep them hidden we can walk in and take the cursed spirits out, Yuji. It been a while since I've let loose. He hid his fist into his other hand and became younger he kept his glasses, but now looked roughly the same age as Megumi, who seemed to be around their mid-forties, Yuji. You about to see what special grade sources can do and what your goal should be just like cursed spirits, where the lower the number the stronger the same rankings can be given to sorcerers, Megumi. Now then let's see what Shikigami we can get you there are bound to be a few strong ones, I say. Then let's do this. Chapter 14 Whose side are you on? After raiding the hospital for a few hours looking for tameable spirits, Issei was left with five that he could use as he wanted he spent the next week training with them alongside Megumi and Yuji. Now it was time for more physical tactics for him to learn. Issei. Black Flash. He looked at them confused as to what they meant, but showed his interest in what they wanted him to do. Yuji. Yes, is a phenomenon in Jujutsu that greatly amplifies the user's physical strike when cursed energy is applied to it within one millionth of a second. They say. How hard is it to achieve? Yuji. Only seven people including myself has used it, but only I and another person have used it multiple times in a row to achieve it. They say. Okay how do we do it? He put down what he had in his hands and walked closer to them. Yuji. Just as you are about to land a hit on your enemy, you increase your output to the highest that you can do, and as you hit the target, it builds an immense force that causes a black flash, I say. Alright let's get down to it, Megumi. It's not that simple I've tried believe me I've tried it's not happening that easily, I say. Okay then let's go we never maybe we even help you get it. Both Yuji and Megumi looked at each other and shrugged and started fighting, they started getting Issei used to cursed weapons and had him use what he normally uses such as katanas and some fighting gauntlets. They had him attack beast and his hits were getting harder and harder as he fought beast they watched his scales grew around his face and arms and as he was about to hit beast they watched him land a hit on beast and he did it black flash it pushed the dust back beast was about to counter again and he hit it again and caused another black flash that sent beast flying into the wall. Issei stood tired and catching his breath. Yuji. You actually did it, Megumi. I think it's because he's got fighting experience on top of learning new techniques and using them when he feels it's necessary, Yuji. Don't be worried weren't we just making sure the kid is keeping to the basics and has improving on his own, Issei. What's next? Megumi. Domain expansion. Issei. What's that? Yuji. It's an advanced barrier technique and is considered the pinnacle of jujutsu sorcery. It constructs the user's innate domain inside a barrier infused with their innate curse technique. Within a domain expansion, the user's curse techniques are improved and any that are activated are guaranteed to hit. They say. I'm going to struggle with it, aren't I? Megumi. Depends I opened mine when I was 15, it all depends on the user with you being able to copy almost every innate technique I do suggest that we first work on getting you used to barriers and how they work before you work on the domain. They say. Oh, all right led the way. They taught him further how barriers work and during this time he messed around and got used to the abilities as a whole, he even mastered Boggy Woggy and used it better than its creator, but during this time Issei grew quieter, realizing that staying neutral between everything is better than having emotion running wild like he normally would this also tamed his dragon better and allowed the hours to grow perfectly after a year it was time for him to leave. He stood in front of the two with office on his on his shoulder, Issei. Thanks for everything guys I won't forget you, and now I'll find this place if I need an escape, Yuji. No problem and give us a call if you need our help, Megumi. The fact they brought back my father again and this time has more in control spells assistance he was capable of a lot without cursed energy, and if he's holding the queen, then it would be in your best interest to have a lot of help while going against him, Issei. Got it CA. He opened his wings and flew away into the distance, as Issei flew away Yuji and Megumi merged together and became one body, and the figure smiled. And now the new king curses has moved on I taught him all my tricks now it is for him to use them as he pleases him done with this life, he will need my help, he's far past it. The figure slowly started turning to ash in the wind blowing away the figure into nothingness. But Issei, Issei. Hey before we go looking for Vale and his team let's see what my old house looks like. He flew towards the house landed, pulled his hood up and looked at the house in front of him. The house had become what it looked like before the Gremory changed it. He walked in and phased through the house and made clones. And they all started walking around the house looking for things everything was there. He made the clones scuff out his face in any photos and went to his room and saw the old look at. Had he turned on the computer and took a look at a few things. Then deleted the old digital footprint he had making it look like he never existed until recently. He felt a presence coming towards Towards the house he masked himself in darkness and hid away seeing a few devil's angels and fallen walk into the house. Devil. Okay as Master Serzich has explained, let's get the clothing and photos and any personal belongings such as rings and all, then we can move on to the apartment. They nodded and started collecting everything he noticed how they were on edge around the house. Office. 
Your cursed energy as much as you are hidden you will make the area feel like a place of dread and put people on edge, I say. Oh yay. He realized it full force and it made them drop what they were doing and they saw a shadow figure quickly leave the house and disappear into nothingness. Fallen. We should go tell the boss. But this say he flew to the apartment and saw more angles fallen and devils there he froze them and walked in. They saw him walk in but his say didn't look like his say anymore. They watched him walk in and they couldn't do anything he lifted the couch cousin and took a notebook, smiled at them, then left after unfreezing them. They made the same decision to go talk to their leaders. Greg. Why the notebook? I say. It was the notes I left for them in the event I did die no point in letting them read it now. Office. Fair. He landed on top of Tokyo Tower and opened the book and read what he left inside it. I say. Yup garbage, none of this is going to change anything. He set his hands alight and watched the book burn into ashes once done he looked forward to seeing the rain cover him. I say. Fitting. He took a deep breath and looked at Shibaya below him. I say. Well if they are right I might be able to stockpile some weapons here. He stood up on the edge flipped off the ledge of the building and used a mix of cursed energy and magic to smash a huge hole into the road, going down to the vault that was there. As he walked in he found a lot of weapons and tools for him to use. I say. Is there enough room to take them all, Greg? Yes there is. He grabbed everything leaving the vault empty and left fast making it look like a shadow was left. He sat on a few buildings above and watched as everyone was checking the hole in the ground, seeing as it goes nowhere. He saw a few devils, angles and fallen come and investigate the area. Once he saw a few of them see him and take photos, and then he disappeared with a sinister grin on his face. Back in the underworld, Serzichas, Serafal, Azazel, and Lord Michael were all looking at the footage with the others they were confused about what was going on. They saw the man that was at the house and apartment and even at Shabai and were confused. Azazel. I've never seen magic like that ever. Serzichas. Neither have I this person needs to be put on high alert and must be apprehended as soon as possible. Serafal. We need to get a handle on this person soon. Back with Issei. He was walking around a forest looking for someone with certain abilities he wasn't phased about what was going to happen all he knew was that he was going to win office was on his shit this time and not in a gear where it was safer to have the unpowered dragon. Issei. How was it? Office. Quite. Issei. Good glad it was quiet for you now are you sure Hess here? Office. They come here a lot for training because they can make a mess and not worry about it, they say. How that's about to change. They walked for a few more minutes and saw them in the distance he had a smile and revealed his aura full flush and covered them in a veil and Office disappeared into the gear to rest more. A few minutes before, Bali and his group could be seen eating something and busy taking a break Karuka and Lafay were busy sitting in the sun enjoying its warmth, they were calm and enjoyed the silence till the whole forest went cold and death was upon them they looked around and saw nothing. Bali. Woes there you dare challenge us it will be your end. It felt like death was on them they all got ready but couldn't figure it out. Oh that's where you're wrong. Within seconds the man was next to Vale and hit him into the ground the others tried to attack him but he forced them back with his Shikigami. Haruka. Shikigami. How? There you are you have something I want. He walked closer to her grabbed her neck and held her higher off the ground. Her legs dangled in the air as she was raised higher. They say, how you coming with me grins. She started turning into a small orb and he made it disappear when he was finished. The rest of Vale's team looked in horror that he just done that to her and all rushed him. Bali. Angry give her back. He rushed the man but was met with a sword through the chest. It surprised all of them that it even went through his armor. The man pulled his blade out and then grabbed Vali by the neck. The weaker of the heavenly dragons, go to Azazel for help. I know about the brigade and how they kicked you out if you even want a chance to kill me. You going to need more help than this. He hit Vali in the chest and they saw black lightning leave the impact point. Vali went flying through a few trees and then stopped embedded in a rock. Arthur and Baiko tried to attack him but he just set them alight and walked away even while weakened. They looked up and watched black dragon wings leave his body and he took off. The others forced themselves up to try and get to Vali as they reached him. They saw him crying in pain and coughing up blood. They tried to heal him but it wasn't helping they bit their tongues and went back to their base, but it was empty like no one was there they were forced to go to Azazel. As they arrived in the underworld, all of the leaders were discussing who this figure was and Vale and his team landed in the meeting room. They all jumped up to get ready to attack them. The Fae crying please help us. They saw her trying to heal Vale, but it was little to no use he was in serious trouble. They laid him on a table to help him and seeing the damage done to all of them, it looked like they were. Azazel. Concerned what the hell happened. He took off his coat and placed it on his chest where there was a large amount of blood leaking out. Arthur. This person found us draped in all black he took us like we were noting. Bang. They looked to the side and saw Rias and her peerage at the door. Isa Akeno and Roswis came to start healing Vale, along with Lafay. Rias. Sorry we took too long. Serzichas. It's fine. Iko. Defeated Hess right that man is going to be a pain for everyone. Serzichas. You mean this man. They showed the photo and they nodded. Iko. 
Blacking out he took Kuroka and then left Veil in that state his magic is something else it is dangerous we felt death before he made his appearance in front of us and then just attacked us. He passed out and they were shocked. Pineko. Why would he want my sister? Irina. Isn't she a sage user other than Yusaka and yourself? They all looked at each other confused. Serzix. We need to figure this out. Michael. Let's first help the boy here perhaps he can help as Issei did. No one liked that idea, but Vale was the closest one to Issei in terms of power before he died, and now there was a new threat, they couldn't help feeling like it was wrong only a year later, and they replacing him. Rias. Lord Mitchell is right we need all the help we can get whether we like it or not. They all nodded and helped team volley better after a few hours of healing, and a few phoenix tears later the whole team sat aside to talk about the current situation on their hands. Rias. So what's going on? Sona. Indeed I saw the news report about Shibaya. Serzich's. First off Ria's, girls don't freak out, but this figure was seen at the Haidu house and his apartment. The pictures of the figure and man shown on the screen. The Fae. This is the same man that attacked us. The Keno. What would he want Kuroka for? It doesn't make sense as to why. Pineko. There is not a lot that sage users can do besides the healing capabilities the added strength is not that much, compared to what he already has a fair amount of abilities that not all sage users have that much I know. Ria's. Those eyes they scream hate look at them. They zoomed in on the man's eyes, and the glowing red pupils with dragon slits scream danger. Beswicea. Lefay are you sure that this man had dragon wings? She nodded and started tearing up thinking of Kuroka. Irina rested her hand on her shoulder. Irina. Don't worry about it I'm sure she's fine. Asia. I hope so too. If this person is a dragon do you think that maybe Tannen could shed some light on what we facing? Serzich's. One way to find out honestly. Azizel. Look at the scales they look sharp, this person might just be our end unknown magic, and with other threats we have our hands tied, I hope that has friendly. Serzix nodded and called Tannen within a few minutes the large dragon came to the window. Tannen. Greetings, what seems to be the problem? Serzich's. We believe we have encountered a new dragon we would like your opinion if you don't mind. Tannen. Sure let me see. They showed him a projection, and they could see the confusion and fear on his face. Tannen. Concerned this is so bad. They all grew worried and confused by his reaction. Azizel. What is it? Tannen. This creature has both the red dragon and great red characteristics. Rias. What? But how? Tannen. There is some dark magic out there where they tear apart dead bodies and take the power off of them, turn them into powerful creatures of destruction, if I'm correct which I am this person needs to be killed, having the power of the red dragon, let alone from the last dragon god alive is horrible news, we need to gather as much power and resources, I sense the white dragon emperor is weakened to this extent, is trouble we need to get to work and pray office doesn't find this dragon abomination, he took off into the air and made everyone feel uneasy, arena, sad so they tore apart his body to make that, Rias. Let's not think about it it's better for all of us this way. Sir Awful. She's right like Tannen said we need to be ready for if we encounter this person. They nodded and went to prepare. But they say. He sat on the hillside with Kirka knocked out beside him. He was watching the sunset waiting for her to wake up. The office. So mind telling me your plan of action. They say. I need some sage help. And it would rather her help me at this point than confuse and hurt my true loved ones. Isn't that right Kuroka? He looked to the side and saw her hiding her face in fear. They say. I know you awake. She flipped around and sent an attack towards him, but it just went around him. She got to her feet and started running for her life trying to get away from him. They say. Don't move. She froze in her tracks and her eyes widened as she saw him walk closer to her, her body shaking with fear, fearing that this was her end, and she couldn't even fix things with her sister. They say. Do me a favor and relax. Geez I wasn't going to kill you if I was I would have done it when I first grabbed you. Karaka. Tearing up please let me go I want to go home. They say. If you help me know you can go home I'll even drop you off I just need some sage help. Peruka. Huh. Issei. Look at me very carefully and read my aura. She did as he told and after a good few minutes she turned pale in fear. Peruka scared how are you alive you should be long dead. Issei. Ouch would have thought you would be happy to see me at least. Peruka. I would have hugged you but as look at me now I'm stuck and can't move. Issei. Oh shit yay my bad. He released her and she came to him and gave him a hug. Peruka. I'm happy you're not dead, but how are you alive for the past year we all thought you were killed off. They say. It's a long story, but I was helped and saved, and by the luck of the gods I was severely injured sure yes I was gutted, but they didn't cut any veins or important organs or even the gut, so I just needed everything placed in the right place and stitched up, and I was good to go I was walking two days after the attack. Broca. Damn that's intense, but what the hell is going on with your aura you're lucky I can read the soul as well that hasn't changed, but everything else you might as well be a new person altogether, it's beginning to make sense as to why you don't want to talk to the others, yet they won't know it's you or they will kill you, they say. 
that's the thing I am basically a new person, but this body is so hurt I want someone to look at my vessels cracks and help me mend them, and I wanted you to help because the other two people I would go to still think him dead. Garoka. But why not wouldn't it be better if they knew you alive? Issei. No, I learned how much worse this fight is, and it doesn't end well if they find out I'm alive even office agrees with me. Garoka. Shocked it's with you? Issei. She now, and yes she stays in the boosted gear because it's quite for her at this point in time, when the brigade kicked you guys out they took all her power, so Shess is very weak and vulnerable right now, Hiroka. Alright I can help but are you sure about this? They say. Do this and I'll give you such powerful children that might be able to use Shikigami as well, Hiroka. Happy deal, but how do you want to do this, bedroom arts or just spiritual healing? They say. Healing please I don't have the heart to do bedroom art and it will feel like I'm using you when I don't want to do that, Hiroka. Okay that works let me see what I'm working with first. She placed her hands on him, and she could see his body break into pieces from all the cracks forming around it. Hiroka. This is going to take a little over a week if we really focus on this. Issei. Sure, gives me time to think about my next steps properly before I make my next move, and I want to see what that monster was. Hiroka. Okay. A pleasant time. Hiroka. Okay. She was conflicted, as of right now he was alive which she was happy about, but on the other hand, she could see the cracks on his body becoming less and less, till they were gone as time went on he used this and started taking in the peaceful feeling in. Hiroka. So mind telling me what your plan is? He thought about it he didn't have a set in stone plan, and to top it off, he didn't even know where to start, he just wanted to first try and get things better on his side, before just running and blind. They say. Find the men that hurt everyone and kill them. The cracks on his body started growing, she felt the bloodlust leave his body and slowly removed his hands in fear, her fingers started trembling, she backed away and tried to get away from him, this wasn't the same as say, but whoever this new version is just as scary, he turned around and came closer to her, he could see the fear on her face, the say, sleep, she fell asleep and she just lay there sleeping soundly, he channeled his magic side and opened his hands over her head, the say, you won't remember this conversation, you won't remember me this moment or who I am, it never happened. He waved his hand over her head, and the spell took effect he picked her up, and then teleported to the Gremory territory, and left her there by the door with a note, and left again taking a look at where he could go next. A few hours later Rias walked to the door because she could hear someone knocking on the door, as she opened the door she Kuroka stood in the doorway with a confused look. Kuroka. Good the re deed, mind letting me and I don't how I got here, Rias. Sure quick come in, let me tell everyone you're here. She sent out an alert to everyone and they came running in seconds, surprised to see her alive and unharmed within seconds Kaneko ran to her sister and gave her a hug. Karuka. Confused whoa did I miss something? She looked around and everyone was concerned for her well-being. The fae. Wait don't you remember? Karuka. Remember what? Aiko. You are being taken by the shadow man that nearly killed all of us including you. Karuka. Um, no I remember him taking me then I fell asleep then I woke up here. Kaneko. He probably wiped your memory. She let go of her sister and then walked back to Rias. Haruka. Still not happy with me are you? Hineko. No. She nodded, and then they all looked at each other. Serzichas. That aside I think you should see this, it's not pretty. He motioned to follow him, and she saw the look of everyone looking sad and helpless. Haruka. Hey, where is Vale? Akeno. On his deathbed. We tried everything but as much as Hess stable now he looks like a lost cause. There's nothing we can do now but wait. They walked to the room, and Kuroka was shocked Volley looked weak. Kuroka. What happened? She walked to him and held his hand it's where they saw the note stuck to her back that was hidden behind her hair. Rias. Hey what's this? She walked to Kuroka took the note and started looking at it, while the others tried their best to be strong. Kuroka. Scared what the hell is there anything else on me? Rias. No that seems to be all, but before this Val has been cursed. Asia. We tried everything to try and heal him, but we couldn't. Kuroka even sage arts. Pineko. I tried but it was too extensive we had Lady Asaka look, and she agreed. Kuruka. No, I refused to let him die. She started shedding tears and tried to heal him more, but it wasn't doing anything. Azazel. Ria's what does the note say? Ria's. Um. It's from the shadow man I think. It says that he won't die and will be fine, but this is to prove to this. Hickhead. That he's useless and pathetic and will never amount to anything in his life. Azazel. Rough. They were all confused and shocked that this person had such a grudge against Vali, but they were happy with the fact Vali will live with the thought of this type of punishment as one serious one. As the letter said Vali was awake and on his feet, but still super weak from the injuries but fine overall, they decided to take Team Vali in and gave them a place to stay. This was a start to a new alliance with at least one powerful dragon in their ranks again. They focused on getting stronger over a year all the girls mellowed out and they tried to move on from Issei. But it never happened anyone was like him sure they went on a few dates here and there, 
But nothing stuck they grew quite most days everyone could see it they miss him a lot. For the first time in over two years, they were all together again watching a rating game, after Issei died Arena had just left the school and all their lives, and focused on being an angle she was made into a high-ranking angle better known as a seraph, she was still part of Lord Mitchell's set as his ace, but even with her, they could see the lack of someone in their lives. They all sat in the VIP section with everyone, they were all pretty quiet even Bali and his team were quiet watching the game go. Asia. Today seems off don't you think? The Keno. Hmm, sir awful. So I'm not the only one. Arena. Something is coming I can't tell if it is good or bad. In the two years since Issei's death her growth in power allowed her to pick up on the wide range around with everyone's intent and whether they were evil or not, she was able to see them. Arena. Two large power signatures are nearby and it's no one in this room. Azizel. Seems demonic to say the least. Ali. Feels like a dragon too. Serzichas then be ready to jump into action at a moment's notice. And Alana. Your father and I will assist with getting the people out of the area if need be. Serzichas. Thank you mother father. They nodded in agreement and carried on watching the game. Rias. Wonder what's going on with our enemy has been quiet since they killed him. The Keno. Couldn't agree more. They sat and waited for anything to happen, and throughout the whole game nothing happened till the end the roof caved in, and a large creature fell through it and started attacking and killing those participating in the game. They all jumped into action, but as soon as they got to the floor, don't move, they all froze in place all the people around them managed to get out, but they were all stuck. Hineko. This isn't good. We need to move. Isa. What's that? They looked up and saw the shadow figure standing by the ledge of the hole in the room with his hair that was tied up blowing in the wind and his glowing red eyes looking down at them. Before he moved the creature broke free breaking technique freeing all of them and ran towards them as it was about to hit them. The man was in front of them and knocked the creature away. This was the first time they had felt so close to death the man in front of them looked like walking death. It roared at him in anger and he slowly started growing his red scales which shocked them all because only one person grew scales like that. They watched him put his hands together and what looked like a large slice cut the creature, but it was no use it only pushed it back more a red and familiar aura spread around all of them, and the man grinned. Been a while since I've used these it feels good. As the creature started running towards him. Hey swordsman get your holy devil sword ready. Kiba. Alright. As he pulled out his sword he clapped and Kiba was next to him running towards the creature each time he clapped they would switch places he pulled out Ascalon shocking everyone, and they both brought out a frenzy of attack towards the creature as it. Kiba landed on the ground and the creature was about to attack him but he switched places with the man who threw his hands together, making a blaster with his scales, and blasted the creature into Kiba's sword, then he sent Kiba back and turned full dragon, with his large skull head red black, and white scales spread around it, with large sharp spines sticking out of its arms and back, the dragon rammed it into the wall, and then something happened that shattered everyone's train of thought, boost, Welsh dragon overdrive, his fire started to spread around him creating a vortex, and he charged the creature one last time taking him and the creature away, and leaving nothing behind but damage, the Keno, Shock does he have the boosted gear? Azazel. No that's impossible it can't be the next user would have to be 2 years old at this point the gear moves on to the next person when the previous one dies. Arana. What's more concerning he has Asculon. Ali. It's definitely the ass that attacked us, that much I can say. Serzichas. Let's see what the cameras caught. They made their way to the observation room where they pulled up the footage of what happened just before the attack they saw everything and saw the clear face of the man. Zenovia. Who is he? He clearly knows us how did he know about Kiba's balance breaker. Asper. He froze everything but the people and then still fought that thing. Roswis. Perhaps he's a neutral figure. Ali. Neutral my ass he kidnapped Kuroka and left me an inch of my life. Kuroka. Even when I try and think back, I don't remember anything. Rias. But here's the real question the boosted gear, Asculon and the fact this person is a dragon, don't make it comfortable since only one person had those items at the same time and he was killed two years ago. Azizel. I fear this may be far beyond our control, it might be Issei. They looked at him confused. Mitchell. What do you mean brother Issei has been passed on for two years now? Azizel. Necromancy. I'm beginning to think that someone found his body and made this monster, it probably has a few of his memories, which is how he knew of us, and still has access to the boosted gear Asculon I want to suggest to confirm my suspicions that if he has the dividing gear, then it's Issei's body. Akeno. Tearing up I'll kill them for doing this to him. Azizel. Slowed down it only a thought I could be way off and it could be fakes, but even so this man is super powerful and dangerous, to say the least we need to tread lightly around him if he used the dividing gear, then it would complicate things more for all of us, because if this is Issei's body. Then we have problems, Issei was growing at such a rate you would never think he was human a few months prior, no supernatural being has been able to do that ever. Serzix. He's right, we need to make our heart strong if he turns on us and uses our memories of him against us, it's going to be easy to kill us. They all nodded in agreement, Seraphal. 
Hayajuka is there a way to trace him the cameras can track magic signature, so wouldn't it also give us some information on what we working with, Ajuka? Let me see. He pulled out a different screen and it scanned the man, and it showed what magic it's reading off him, Ajuka. Our fears might just come true, the system reads the magic from a person, and it reads 80% red dragon emperor, 5% white dragon emperor and 15% unknown. Silence filled the room the girl started to shed a few tears, because his body had turned into this monster, even some of the guys couldn't help it two years later, his body was being used for evil, he is. Tearing up brother permission to get Issei's body back, Serzich's. Granted but we all are going we will get Issei's body back, they nodded and started looking for a signature, and they tracked it to a singular location in the overworld, Ajuka. Hessen Central Asia, Vichil. Then let's get our friend back. The girl's heart started racing knowing that he probably has some of his memories were something good to look for. They made a magic circle and landed in a forest of Central Asia surrounded by large trees in an opening. Gravel. Gross. They looked to the side and saw a large dead animal that was gutted. They heard a voice and hid their signatures and presence and saw something that confused them it was the man, but he was eating something they thought was dangerous. Office. But they say. They say. You have enough to eat. Office. Yes but are you sure about this? They say. We have no choice it has been two years since the incident and I want payback for me and you, I made a promise to get your power back and I'll do so. Office. When we get my power back I'll help you get the queen to add to your arsenal. They say. Oh I will then him killing everything and everyone that gets in my way. He took up and took off his shirt and unknown to him, they saw the large scar going down his chest and a load of other scars, worse than what he initially had Yuji and Megumi, littered his body with scars from all the training in the past year. They say. Ember raise a veil, that doesn't need to be tracked with this. The ball of fire came out of his chest. Ember. Yay my turn to help. They watched as it made a large barrier around them, then went back to Issei he changed his shirt and then held his hand to office. Issei. Let's hope this doesn't kill us, because now that Shikigami I beat this morning is one of the best with the tools I have with me as well I'm going to raise hell. Snap. He turned to his side, and office was consumed by a red aura, and his eyes started glowing he. Issei burned away everything in the barrier revealing everyone hiding in the bushes, he didn't say anything but shook his head. Issei. So you chose death. He released his bloodlust and murderous intent, and they fell to their knees feeling like death was upon all of them. Issei. Don't get involved with other people's business this is my business it doesn't concern either of you, that white haired jackass knows what I'm exactly talking about, he covered his arm with white scales, they say. It's nice great red let me keep this when I met him, he divided all their power and shot it into the sky, he is. Weak no, give back his body it's not yours, Azizel. Weak who is your master, they say laughing cute you think you can give me orders not even Serzich's can touch me, he snapped his fingers and they were sent back to the underworld, Ajuka. What happened? Azizel. Weak it's definitely Issei's body I was right, but it's not Issei it's something else. Ajuka. That's troublesome. Seraphal. Where do you think he's going to next? Serzich's. Our best bet would be to wait and see when we get a large scale power attack that we can trace, but first. He looked to his side, and the girls were shedding tears because they wanted to bring Issei's body back, but it was not possible. Serzich's. We need to prepare them for what's to come. The strongest. Riaz and Akeno spent some time tracking the signature again to see where he went. They were determined to get his body back, while the others did what they could to see if they could revert the changes done to Issei's body. Roswis. Any luck? Riaz. No, it's like he fell off the face of the earth. Akeno. There have been some residuals but other than that he's gone. Roswis. Irina said she's going to use the heaven system to see if she can find him and get some other angels to look into reverting what was done to him. Riaz. That will help. Pineko. What is the actual plan if we do get a hold of him he's not the same person that will just come lightly with us. They kept quiet they didn't consider that this man would be friendly or even easy to fight, and he's unpredictable, to say the least. Akeno. See if Issei is in there somewhere, we can try and get him to come out so we can distract him. Isa. That should work, I miss him so much, but what if he isn't in there and we try and this backfires on us. Kaneko. We all miss him. But all we have is hope let's not think about the bad yet when the good outweighs the bad. They nodded in agreement, they carried on looking for him in the observation room looking at temples castles even caves and tombs to see where he could be days past that turned into weeks, then soon two months passed, and then they got a hit in Pennsylvania. There he is. Let's tell the others let go. Akeno. I'll call Arena to tell her. They all grouped in the Gremory territory and met in the living room, most of them looking confused for being called so soon. Serzich's. What's going on Rhea? There he is. We have a match to his signature in Pennsylvania. Azizel. Alright what's the plan? Roswis. We going to try and appeal to the side we know and try and distract him to try and catch him off guard, then we can capture him and place him in holding where he can't get out. They nodded and then teleported to the location, and once there it was cold and dark, they looked around and found themselves in a remote location not everyone knew about. 
The place was surrounded by large mountains and even deep valleys, it looked almost impossible to get to it, unless by plain below was a decent town with a castle in the center, all the buildings looked to be abandoned, but there was a clear sign of recent movement and life in these buildings. Serzichas. This place looks long dead. Taking a deeper look the place was empty, but something still seemed off. Mitchell. I must agree, I do pick up on some devils here, and they're most likely strays, but something feels off about them. Arena. Agreed they are not normal devils, and there are two large power sources one seems angry, and the other seems more like a child. There he is. He should be here the computer found his signature somewhere here down there. Zenovia. Should we go take a look and do some recon? I wouldn't do that if I were you, they'll kill you on the spot they are demons, not devils. They turned around and saw the man behind them he had a bored look on his face, but he took down his hood and walked past them. They say. Want to tell me why you following me around? It it's irritating. There he is. Angry we want that body back it doesn't belong to you, they say. Funny Arias, you think this body belongs to someone else, I don't have time for your little games I have things to do, leave neither of you understands the problem in front of you. They were shocked that he knew who exactly they were, but waited to attack in case he attacked one of them he walked past them, and he felt a hand on his shoulder and pulled him to turn around. Serziches. You are coming with us you won't get away with this, and we will take our loved one's body back, they say. This body is mine you can't change that, and I wouldn't be so high and mighty's ex. He flipped Serzix over then the rest started to attack him, he negated every single one of their attacks they couldn't touch him, and he was too fast to power they then tried and get him to stand still, he continued to dog at everything, something caught him off guard he saw Arena, and the face she had it wasn't happy, nor was it angry it looked empty of life, he never wanted that for her. He watched as Arena used her sword to wrap around his legs, and then drag him where the rest knocked him out. They say. Blacking out shit. Serzich's. Catching breath now let's get him back to the underworld if he wakes up he might not be docile anymore. They nodded and took him away to the underworld once back they strapped him down and started doing tests on his body. Mitchell. We have a spell that we can try to revert his body to how it was, would you mind if we try? Serzich's. Go ahead Lord Mitchell it alright. He opened his hand and placed it over the body, and they watched as bright golden flakes fell on his body, and they tried to revert his body, but it woke him up, and he screamed in pain trying to get it off him. He pulled the straps off, but Serzichas blasted him down, and Vali divided his power it divided, but he couldn't use it the power faded away like it never existed. Vali. Weird it's gone. They say in pain let me go. Azazel injected something into his neck that knocked him out, and they carried on trying to see what they could do to get his say back. This carried on for a week straight they beat him repeatedly to get him to sit down and see if they could get his say out, but it was a useless fate. After their last number of tests and attempts to get him back, they decided to cross-reference all his scars and looked at the scars to cross-reference them with what they knew he had, and it wasn't looking good everything was a match. There he is. Everything is a one of one. Bravel. These others seem more drastic, you can see this one is still fresh, but the skin burst here and here, while the rest of these look like blunt force trauma, like someone hit him with a batter of fist. Arena. He's even got the cut I accidentally gave him when we came back, even the cut he got on his arm when we were kids. Akeno. But is it him? We can't say for sure, some of his magic matches, but the rest doesn't it doesn't even look like him anymore. They carried on looking at his face, but it was hard for them sometimes it looked like him other times it didn't, and it was so painful to see this. Azizel. Necromancy takes everything and makes a new person, I'm not sure if we can wake up the assay we know, but as of right now this isn't him after a week, and nothing has changed it's not him, but is him at the same time we need to tread lightly around him for time being, we have suppressed his magic and power far lower than a low rank devil, and it will stay that way till we can figure something out, they nodded in agreement, Sir Awful. I think let's put him in a holding cell that will surpass his magic further, till we can figure out how to get the old Issei back. They all agreed and placed him in the holding cell, and then left to see what they could do fix. Issei then woke up and found him in a prison cell. Issei. Damn it they have no idea what they're doing, I need to get out of here. He checked his magic and found it weaker, but still more than enough to use when and if he needed out. Grinning oh good you're awake. He looked up and saw Vali with a grin on his face. Vali entered his cell and grabbed him by the neck. Vali. This is for nearly killing me. He started hitting him in the gut making Issei cough out blood, and when he was done he slammed his face into the wall, and then ground a few times after that volley left his body there. Issei. In pain he'll kick his ass when I have more energy. Elsewhere in the overworld, a tall man with black eyes and a scar on the side of his mouth walked towards an old man sitting on a throne. Hoji. I'll be attacking the Grimmery territory today they found our base can't let that happen can we? Rizivum. 
Good now go cause some havoc and see what you can do with the queen, it's been two years your body should have adapted to it, and now you should be able to do more damage than normal. Hoji nodded and walked with a few large demons and cursed spirits with him. A few days later, after Vali had beaten Issei for what he did to him before and left him for dead in the prison, he used reverse cursing techniques, Issei just sat passing the time thinking about what they were on only difference about today, was that Akeno and Riaz came to see him with some food. Issei. Makeno stew, how I miss its taste. They looked at each other with concerned looks and handed him the food. Riaz. Can you answer some questions for us, please? They say. Depends do I get to leave because I'd rather not break mother and father's home. He took a bite of some meat grew a smile and looked at them. Riaz. Don't call them that they are nothing to you and will never mean anything to you. Akeno. She's right don't use his memories for your gain. They say. What are you even going on about it makes no sense, but what's the question? Riaz. What happened that night? Distance bang. They all looked at the same spot where the sound came from and saw some guards running in the same direction. They say. Well after I had my chest cut open, I slowly bled out, but I was saved by someone who stitched me up, and that's all she wrote. Akeno. That's a lie we watched the true owner of this body die before you got it. They say. Did you confirm his death? Because I know, you don't know what you're doing. Louder bang. This time the attack shook the whole building that some rocks started cracking, and small pieces started to fall from the roof, hitting their heads and bouncing off their bodies. There he is. Not the point we saw him die. They looked at him looking to what would be the source of the sound. They say. Seems like what I wanted to get handled decided to attack you instead, you should probably go help them someone is going to die. There he is. Don't worry about that now, they going to be fine they have the white dragon emperor with them, along with my brother and his queen. They say. Don't be stupid can you even touch these things? He held his hand out, and a small creature came out of his hand, Akeno went to try and touch it, but her hand went through it, it then went and moved her hair out of her face and disappeared, they say. You see if you can't touch it, but it can touch you how do you know things will be fine, I don't like the fact Asia Gaspar Le Fay are on the field without someone like us to watch them, they could get killed, there's a whole attack going on outside I suggest to let me go, you can't kill cursed spirits, Akeno. Regardless why would we let you out, all you've done is cause problems for us. He was getting irritated with the two of the men burst off at them. Issei. For the love of God can't you see it's me, my name is Issei Haidu, better known as Issei Lucifuge, the same man you fell in love with the same one that fought through everything to try and get high class, so I can marry Riaz, the same man you hurt and nearly killed and worked so hard to try and win back his trust. He grabbed the bars tore them apart and ran outside leaving them in shock. Outside a few minutes ago, Ali. I don't like this it's like death is outside again. Arena. I know it's not coming from Issei's body downstairs. They watched as even a lot of the guards started to get ready for a fight. Then saw Serzich's come towards them looking a bit off. Serzich's. We need to hurry scouts just confirm that there's a large number of demons and some unidentified creatures coming our way Azazel and Mitchell will be here in a few minutes to help us. They nodded and went to the front line and saw the large number of weird creatures running towards them. Zenovia. Well that's off putting that they're that big draw sword. Asia. Hopefully Riaz and Akeno can get some answer out of that thing in the prison. Roswis. I'm sure they will, but right now we need to focus here. Tiba. Some of those things are fast I don't like that draw sword. Arthur. Those weird ones look like they going to be a problem they have the same feeling our prisoner has. Asper. I'll just freeze them. He tried to do so, but a good chunk of them with a the man they saw attack Issei still working unfazed with a large group of creatures running towards them. Ali. Well that's not good, got any other ideas that'll work. Serzichks. Let's just keep them away from the house keeping them at bay is our priority. They nodded and got ready with the guards. As the first ones got close enough they started attacking them, but it was like they weren't hurting them, their attacks went straight through them like they were ghosts. Asper tried to freeze them again, but as he tried a creature sent its claws through his chest, he screamed in pain Le Fay and Issa ran to him to help him, but more creatures started attacking them as well, and held down the others to make them watch. The others heard their cries for help as they were being ripped apart by the creatures and tried to attack, but it was useless, it did nothing the creatures were unaffected by their attacks, some looked like they were even laughing at them, as they were slowly becoming overwhelmed a few more creatures appeared, and one super large familiar one came running attacking the creatures and killing them, then a large black energy spread past them killing off the weird looking creatures, and putting the rest into shock to slowly start moving back in fear, they looked back and saw the man running towards them, and started attacking with his swords they had never seen before, and he was cutting them like paper, Serzich's. What in the world? Brother. They looked to the side and saw Riaz and Akeno flying towards them. Raphia. Riaz why did you set him free? Riaz. Out of breath it's a say, it's really him Hess alive. They looked back and saw the man cutting down these creatures like they were paper. Arena. But. They watched as the boosted gear spread around his body and large dragon wings came out, then heard Drake's voice. Drake. 
Pyrus Dragonlord Balance Breaker is say ran even faster becoming a red line cutting down everything in his path and pushing the bodies aside, killing everything in his path. They have never seen such strength since the faction war, especially from one person. He then slapped his hands together and made a large blaster and heard Drake's voice again. Dreg. Sonic Blaster. He set off a massive blast towards the bigger demons. Killing them in seconds. He took a deep breath and then looked at Toji. Toji. You seem different. Issei. You don't. They both took out their tools. And Issei's scales changed form becoming sleeker and shaper. Toji. You can use Shikigami now, ha, huh, too bad I have the queen. They bolted towards each other, and they watched the two clash fighting in a similar fashion, either attacking or blocking the opposite attack with each strike, they were shattering the ground around them. Issei then got the upper hand kicked his chin, then flipped away from each other. Issei slapped his hands together and smiled. Issei. You have the queen, but I became the king, domain expansion. The world around all of them stopped and slowed down. They saw the expression on Toji's face change from confidence to fear. Issei. Infinity. The world around them changed and they looked like they were in space they could see the universe expand around them and move. Issei then created a purple orb and sent it towards Toji. Toji. Not again. And cut off half of his body, then quickly went to grab the ring from him and watched as a black figure went towards his body. Everything came back to normal and they could see the true damage that move did. Everything around them where the field was obliterated to the point of thinking that a full-on war happened he was panting hard. They watched as the scales fell off his body. They could see half of this body on the ground turn back into a weird man's old body. Issei then took a deep breath and the scales on his body started crackling from the embers leaving his body. Azazel. Hey we here, what's going on why is he out of prison? Issei. You tell me, old man. He walked to the bodies of Isa Gasper and Le Fay and inspected their bodies he held out his hand and their bodies started to look better, but they weren't moving. Issei frustrated this is on all of you if you had listened to me from the beginning, then they would still be alive. Rias. But, Issei. But nothing Rias, you all set me back a week I need to get back to my problem at hand. Arena. Issei wait. He created a tornado of fire and took off in his dragon form and took off at speeds they didn't think were imaginable. Serzich's. You said it's him how did you figure that out? Rias. Look, she played the recording for them and saw what he did and they were shocked that it was him. Arena. But if it's him why didn't he come back, why did he stay away for so long? Serzich's. I think let's do some recounts of what's happening maybe we can piece it all together. They nodded feeling conflicted he was right if they didn't interfere, then things would be different. Once back inside and after sorting out injuries and the dead they sat and started an important discussion. Serzich's. What does Issei know that we don't? Azizel. Well, he made his first appearance about three or so days ago when our people collected his things from the house and apartment he took something we don't know what, but they saw him take something. Arena. It was his notebook it didn't have anything special in it. Akeno. But then what about Shibaya? He caused quite a panic. Mitchell. We found some remnants of an energy that we only picked up off of him and these creatures that have been coming up recently. Azizel. Looks like a weapons vault if you ask me, now then what about the two year gap in his time? He got that strong in two years and we are nowhere different than when he died. Ali. He mentioned that he made contact with Great Red when we first went to Central Asia. Garuka. Then what about when he took me for two days on your clock? Zerafal, we are still unable to figure that out his memory wipe seems stronger than what our best can even do. Rias. Here's my question, what is he fighting for? There is a clear person Valis grandfather what is his goal, he even kicked out the brigade and formed something else. Serzich's. You have a point he has an end goal here. Ali. Destroy the world and leave it to the purest of the purebloods. Azazel. Regardless a feat of that caliber is one thing, but on the other hand he has the power to make a change close to it, he opens some otherworldly power SA seems to have the same powers from what I've taken notes on. Ajuka. I have to stop you there Azazel the power Issei has been using is more organic to humans than we supernatural look. They showed the clips of Issei moving around and when they were busy testing him trying to revert what they thought was necromancy on him. Ajuka. This power flows in such a way that it's better for the human body to build strength and power. Serzich's. Dio's it have name. Ajuka. Cursed energy, it's a power source aligned with negative emotions. Think about it have you seen him smiling while Hess fighting or when he needs to use these abilities. Bowel. No not even when he fraught us it was pure anger and hatred only. Ajuka. The more angry ones get or the worse the negative emotions get that they get stronger, fueled by this they can create abilities akin to them, such as teleporting or even changing reality. Serzich's. So you think he just got a power boost from the loss of Asia Gapser and Lefei. Awaka. 
one way to find out we can watch I studied the power in him, so we can always find him in the event he breaks free. The projector opened and it was back in Pennsylvania. But the say, he was standing on top of a mountain crying trying to get his emotions back in check. The say like crying damn it. He hit the ground and fire spread from his hand and started burning the spot that he hit. Ember came out of his chest and snuggled with him as best she could as a ball of fire. Ember. I'm sorry Ice, but not even I could bring them back, we need you to get your head back to the way it was, you know it's for the best, I say. I know. Sniff it's fine we are here now and I have Rika with me I have that force field around me again with the added six eyes. The large creature came out from him and was poking its fingers together, then they heard it speak. Rika. Shy sorry if I hurt you when we first met. I say. It's fine, they didn't do anything to you did they? Rika. No. They just wanted me to help that man. I say. All I want you to do for me is lend me your help when we can get back office power, then we can change our plan this was meant to happen last week, but things happened. Rika. Angry I'll kill them for hurting you, I say. Chuckles relax it's fine now then Ember you ready to do this, I know Drag is. Ember. Happy you bet. She went back into his body so did Rika, then he spread his scales around his body, I say. They pissed me off for the last time this is my declaration of war. He started running towards the central tower, and creatures burst out of the ground. He set off a large attack that killed all of them in seconds, causing all of them to run out of the building. As they got closer here and past them, and they all were cleanly cut in half so were the buildings. He pulled out his sword and then sliced down cutting the earth clean in half, allowing him to fall into the underground tunnels. Issei's body started feeling weird almost like it was going to break. Back in the underworld. Kaneko. This isn't good. Bakura. I agree with you his body is going to break. Roswis. What do you mean? Kaneko. Sage arts were keeping his soul from breaking further we can see it if Yusaka saw it. She would force him to do bedroom arts to try and fix all the damage in such a short amount of time. If we don't get a handle on that he can die from it, it's like his soul is dying, and this time there won't be any comebacks. Garuka. The more damage his soul gets the harder it will be to save him if he dies. Ravel. We can't have that can we? Back with the say. They made it down to the lab, and they found something that looked like office in a test tube, and what looked like a ball of lighting. The say brought out office and she walked towards the tube. Office. So this is what they did with my power. The say crouched down next to it and looked at the tube. The say. Chances that it's evil. Office. Unlikely. The say. Think about how you want to handle this let me go and handle the elemental. Ember came out and floated with him towards the elemental. It looked at him confused. What are you? The say. A friend. You want out. Ember. Come on, he trustworthy he'll look after us. Yes please. Issei broke the prison it was in, and then both floated back to him. Issei. Mind if I call you Jules? Jules. Sure sounds good to me friend. Issei. Just call me Issei don't worry about it. They both went into his body, and he started getting some sparks off his scales. He then went back to office, and then placed a hand on the glass. Issei. Say the word and it opened. Office. Do it, it looks like I get a bit of my power back when I'm in close proximity to this creature. She had her power spark off her hands, the glass where Issei hand was shattered, and he grabbed the girl that was inside and held it, and she started fighting back trying to push him away from her. Freaking out no Lilith doesn't want to fight, please no more tests. Issei. Hey relax, look who you are with, I'm a friend. She opened her eyes and looked at who held her his face was soft yes covered with scars, but she didn't get any bad intentions from him, and it just solidified when she saw office with him. Issei. Do you want to leave this place? She nodded and hugged him. They say. All right we're done here let go. They were taken into the gear and he flew out of the place once again leaving it abandoned. They say. No more life, the place is abandoned. He flew past a room with a skeleton that had vampire teeth, then flew into the sky creating a tornado and disappearing off their radar completely again. Serzich's. We kept him from doing all that, he doesn't even need us anymore to help us he's a one-man army. Arena. I don't think he's going to be very forgiving when we meet again, we hurt him a lot. Mitchell. Agreed we need to make it right. Serzich's. But how do we have no way of really convincing him to come back, he has no reason to come back to us, we broke that bridge a week ago. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.